Hey everyone, a few months ago I designed this thing. I like to call it the Ghast Pixel, and what makes it super special is that it can show three colors being black, white, and as you can see in a moment, striped. And that's a lot different from most redstone pixel displays because they usually use redstone lamps, which only have two states being on and off. It shouldn't come as too much of a surprise that I even built this thing because we do love our wacky displays on this channel, as shown here, and here. However, one thing can be said for certain about this display, and it's probably just about the worst display I've ever designed in my life. It's heavy, it's clunky, and it's absolutely way too big to be used for any display of reasonable resolution. Despite these fallbacks, many of my fans still had hope for the design, and one of the ideas that was suggested fairly frequently was Connect 4. And the reason this idea is so brilliant is because it basically fits my criteria perfectly. It can be played on a very low resolution screen, pretty much a 6x7, can be played using giant pixels, and also conveniently needs exactly three different pixel types. An empty slot, a player 1 slot, and a player 2 slot. And after about four months of waiting, I finally worked up the nerve to put something together. And I say worked up the nerve because the first two times I tried anything Connect 4 related, I had to discontinue the project because it was either impossible or I was just way too incompetent to actually make something worthwhile. Okay, so let's actually address how this thing works. But I'm not going to be talking about this one because it's a hunk of garbage. We're going to instead be addressing the more modern design. This is far more compact. First thing you'll notice, the minecart. It's supposed to have a gas in it, but I killed it because it's impossible to see when it's there. Next thing is, this minecart is fully pressed up against the red block here. What that means is that when the gas is inside, it's actually fully poking out through both layers of walls. This creates a full white pixel. If we go ahead and trigger the contraption, it inches backwards. This is caused by a brief powering of the powered rail underneath. What essentially this means now is that since it's slightly backwards, it's slightly more set into the wall, which means that we can only see the gas through these, uh, I guess the inner layer of these walls. Because it's a ridged surface, it allows us to create two layers of depth. This is a striped pixel. I'll refer to it as a gray pixel from now on. Lastly, we kind of got black. This is caused by simply just moving it one more step inwards, and that completely conceals the pixel. In order to return back to the original state of white, we bring this white block forward, and that's going to push the minecart back to the original state when we then again briefly power the powered rail. The reason why this old design is such a piece of garbage and the new one isn't is because this one takes a whole extra minecart just to push this one back into place. I don't know what was going through my head when I designed this thing, but this other minecart makes this design so uncompact that it's literally impossible to use in the final grid behind me. Okay, so I've talked enough about the actual pixel, how the hell do we make a Connect 4 cell? And, logically, it only needs to do five things. The first thing is switch to black. This is when we inevitably reset the board and we need to wipe the slate clean. The other one is to switch to gray. That means when we drop a player 2 coin in, it's going to switch to the striped version of the pixel as seen over there. And the other one is switch to white, player 1 pixel. The next thing it needs to do is lock itself, because if it didn't, it would just immediately be replaced by another pixel on top, which is not what happens in Connect 4. In Connect 4, they stack on top of each other, forming columns. Lastly, it needs to unlock the pixel above. How this system is going to work is that all pixels above the bottom one will be locked, and the moment that this one is filled, it'll unlock the next one, then that one will be filled, unlocking the next one, and eventually it'll pile up into a column, very similar to how Connect 4 operates in-game. If we take a look at the guts of the contraption, we can actually see that this white quartz block right here indicates whether or not this row is unlocked. Currently, it's in the unlocked position. This makes sense, the game hasn't started yet, and the bottom row should be unlocked to receive coins. If it's below down here, like all the other layers, it's going to be locked. If we go ahead to the trigger system, and we actually drop a coin, you can see that this now changes to the locked position. We've dropped a coin into the first row, and it actually sends a signal up through this rail redstone here, and puts the next layer into the unlocked position. Now it too can receive a coin, and continue stacking upwards. Unfortunately, when I initially designed this thing, I made a stupid mistake. See, the thing is, is that this design is actually a tech demo. The pixel was never meant to do anything real. Thus, it was totally okay that it could only go from black to white 
to gray, and then back to black again. This is actually a major issue though when I actually teach it to play Connect 4. What essentially needs to happen is this black pixel, an empty slot, needs to be able to transition to both possible player inputs, which means this arrow needs to be turned around. That breaks the machine. This is impossible. The fix I designed is that we actually just get rid of this arrow. It's totally useless. We actually just go straight from black to white and then to gray if we want a gray pixel. We have to go through white regardless because it's the only way the machine works. A nice convenience though that popped up is that it actually doesn't matter whether you're on a gray pixel or a white pixel, it's still possible to transition directly to black, making resetting the board incredibly easy. If we actually look at the guts of this machine, we can see that this white wire actually runs straight to the white power switch, while the gray wire actually hits this block which powers both the white power switch and the gray power switch on this side, with, after a little bit of delay. The reset switch is just this final wall right here, and that just tells the machine to shove the minecart to the back of the display and switch it to black. Alright, so we've discussed what makes the columns work, now let's talk about some of the logic on top. The turn indicator. This thing just switches from gray to white every single time we want to play a move. What also switches when a turn is played is this block back and forth. What essentially determines is whether or not a placement in this column will be a white or a gray. Every time we play a turn, this switches, which creates the turn-based playstyle of Connect 4. You don't have to worry at all about this logic circuit in the back here, this just makes sure that some hooligans don't spam the levers and break the machine instantly. Idiot proofing is the number one job of any engineer. Alright, so on to actually playing the game. You play the game with these buttons, if that wasn't self-explanatory enough. But what's great though, is you might notice that that is actually really really fast. If you play video games, you know how miserable ping and latency can be, and I actually sought to reduce this problem by using instant wires for as much of the build as possible. So when you put an input in, it actually communicates to the machine relatively quickly the move that you're going to play. As for the reset button, it's right behind here. What that does is it just wipes the board and switches the turn to player 1. There's actually one tidbit I forgot to mention or put into the machine, and that's the fact that you can continue to put coins into an already full column. This I know is game breaking and totally wrecks endgame strategy, but the reason I'm leaving it in is because I'm lazy. If you want to play fair, you can play fair. I'd like to imagine this mechanic is actually just a real life analog to taking the coin and throwing it at the other person because it's rude, unfair, and pretty stupid. Anyways. So, if you like the kind of content that I make, make sure to check out my other things. If you want to see more, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time in the next video, whenever that is.